As long as I've known him, my dad has wanted to be Harrison Ford. My brothers and I watched tons of Harrison Ford movies alongside our dad, a man who cared little for the phrase, some material inappropriate for children under 13. I was only nine, maybe 10, when I watched a Nazi's face melt off in Raiders of the Lost Ark, a woman get brutally murdered in The Fugitive, and a convoy of Suburbans get RPG'd in clear and present danger. That last one was his favorite. It remains the ultimate dad movie. As a devout Catholic, the film's tagline, truth needs a soldier, spoke directly to his particular brand of morality. And as a Republican taxpayer during the Clinton administration, the plot, which featured a man who defied the federal government at every turn, spoke to him even more. That man was Jack Ryan, the Harrison Ford character my dad most wanted to become. He incorporated Jack Ryan into his look by appropriating his iconic aviator shades. They took up 50% of his face. And the half that was still visible suggested that he could not and should not ever pilot an aircraft. <laughs> My dad, who started going bald in his late 20s, didn't have Jack Ryan's bountiful brown hair, nor did he stand over six feet tall, nor did he have a cushy government job that let him rub shoulders with the president's chief of staff but he could at least have those sunglasses. I think they made him feel like Jack Ryan, a hero of post-Cold War Tom Clancy movies, a CIA career man who always found himself in the crosshairs of an international incident. He was the 90s version of Jack Bauer, except with less torture and fewer Arabs. Yeah, he was first played by Alec Baldwin, but come on, what red-blooded American father wants to be Alec Baldwin before Harrison Ford? <laughs> The first time Harrison Ford played Jack Ryan was in a movie called Patriot Games. The action kicks off when on a trip to London with his wife and daughter, Ryan foils an assassination attempt on a member of the royal family. After shielding his wife and daughter from a car bomb with his own body, he tackles and disarms one terrorist, kills two more, and takes a bullet to the shoulder. It's riveting stuff. <laughs> and it's exactly the kind of heroic opportunity I think my dad always looked for. As a father of three boys, it made sense that he'd be on the prowl for chances to exhibit not only competent masculinity, but uncommon valor as well. Using a miter saw to build a backyard tree fort is one thing. Stopping a rogue faction of the Irish Republican Army is something else entirely. <laughs> this is the kind of right place at the right time courage most men dream of, yet few ever encounter. Growing up in our privileged corner of North County, San Diego, my brothers and I faced zero threats. Or if we did, we were never informed of them. <laughs> For all I know, Dad was defeating terrorists left and right. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there was an attempted coup at one of his city council meetings, and it just never made the local news. My dad worked hard to give us a life in that safe neighborhood with nice schools, a dozen churches to choose from, as long as it was Catholic, and a city road crew that fixed potholes in a timely manner. There was never anything to worry about, which meant there were no opportunities to be heroic. It made sense that in such an unthreatening town, my dad took a liking to the Jack Ryan persona. And if he's anything like I am now, he continues to wonder how he'd perform in a dangerous scenario. I know I do. The only problem is my dad never taught me how to stop a terrorist attack. Maybe that's why he so frequently popped in the VHS cassette of Patriot Games on family movie night, hoping I would learn by watching Harrison do his thing. <laughs> the core lessons were all there in that one action scene. Protect your family defend the helpless, stand up to bullies. On a near daily basis, I questioned my strength at all three. For most of my time as a kid, I was short statured and I couldn't achieve anything heroic even if I tried. So by the time I finally achieved a reasonable height and half decent upper body strength, I had a lot of catching up to do. One time I was at a college party and I saw a guy yanking on a girl's arm. This was it, I thought. <laughs> I could finally defend someone's honor. After all, I'd seen Harrison Ford do that in witness. <laughs> I immediately got in the guy's face with big, what's your problem, bro, energy. <laughs> As it turned out, the two of them were just messing around and the girl wasn't in any actual danger. I was wrong. Or if I wasn't, I was certainly made to feel that way as the backyard hangout vibe ground to a halt while everyone looked at me wondering what my problem was. I left the party and went back to my dorm. That was around the time I started to traffic in an alternative lower profile sort of bravery. 
a kind of baseline competence I delude myself into thinking is a form of heroism. I've helped change a few flat tires in my day. I've lost track of how many couches I've helped my friends move. And I have even, and I'm being very literal here, walked an old lady across the street. <laughs> but the closest I've gotten to being a man of action was the time I got into an altercation with a mentally ill guy in a liquor store. All I wanted was to buy my beer and get out of there, but he wouldn't get out of the way. I stared at him, wondering what I should do. Should I leave, push him, threaten him? What did the Harrison Ford playbook have to say about this? I was grateful when one of the store's employees stepped between us and escorted him away. But when I returned to my car, there he was, screaming and banging on the passenger window of my Honda, where my girlfriend was sitting, waiting for me. She was frozen in terror. I charged like a linebacker, lowered my shoulder, and launched him across the alley. Then I got in the car, threw it in reverse, and drove us home. My girlfriend didn't stop shaking for an hour. In retrospect, it wasn't my finest moment. I should have just left and gone to a different store. It's not like the city is lacking in places to buy IPA. <laughs> but deep down, I wanted the confrontation. I wanted him to threaten my girl. I wanted to send him flying across the alley, sprawled on his ass with a, with a bruised hip and a lesson learned. But the real lesson was one I needed to learn. If I seek violence, I am guaranteed to find it. I can't be the only man who invites challenge or who, in the pursuit of problems to solve, ends up creating them. I know I'm not because my dad still does. Surely, if the IRA came to Poway to assassinate the mayor <laughs> on a family trip to Baskin Robbins, my dad, even in his late 60s, would be the first to act. He doesn't wear aviators anymore, but back when he did, I remember him scanning his environment through them, keeping a close eye out for danger, trying to notice if anything was off. To this day, he habitually locks his doors when he stopped at an intersection with panhandlers in the median. And while walking with my mother on the sidewalk, he still positions himself between her and the road, presumably to block careening vehicles with his own body. <laughs> Here's the thing, I do all this and more. My fiance can't stand it when we are about to cross the street and I instinctively put my arm out to shield her from an oncoming car. She has her own brain and her own eyeballs, but whenever I perceive a threat, I ignore her basic capacity for keeping herself alive and become my overprotective dad. <laughs> but even though my dad never once pushed someone out of the way of a drunk driver, tackled a terrorist, or even exercised his constitutional right to buy a gun, my brothers and I already saw him as Harrison Ford. He was the protagonist of his own story, wherever there was one to tell. He irrigated our front, our front yard. He taught me to drive, even while instilling the fear of both God and high-speed collisions. <laughs> and he always made sure there was enough money in my college meal plan account. Those things always seemed pretty heroic to me. But he was also similar to Harrison Ford in one other big way. Like the hard-boiled characters he often played, I never really got the sense my dad was the kind of guy to seriously confide in. There it is. Don't get me wrong. My dad welcomed a variety of topics. I felt like I could talk to him about my ancient Egypt social studies homework, or the spiritual dynamics of the Holy Trinity, or what he thought, of, what he thought a Robert Frost poem meant. But when it came to the truly personal stuff, I preferred my mother. She was more emotionally available to discuss things like the crushes I had on girls, or why I would sometimes cry for no reason in middle school. Dad, on the other hand, was intimidating, just like Jack Ryan. In those movies, Ryan was always grabbing dudes by the collar and delivering righteous threats and ultimatums. He pointed his finger a lot. Come to think of it, most Harrison Ford characters point their finger a lot. I think my dad took some of his parenting lessons from this kind of physicality. Sometimes he'd poke me directly in my sternum whenever I fucked up or grasp me by the neck and rotate my head toward the altar when I didn't pay attention in church. <laughs> Anything less than a B minus on a report card was basically treated as failure. He was always pushing me to try harder, do better, pay more attention. I remember this furiously confused look on his face when he tried to teach me math as if Jack Ryan himself was teaching me algebra with all the subtlety of an airstrike. 
<laughs> then something changed. The illusion broke. Harrison Ford became old, and so did my dad. Dad suddenly became separated from the Jack Ryan image around the time Harrison Ford started making bad movies. During the period when he was attempting awful Russian accents, slumming it in buddy cop flicks, and crashing his airplane every fucking month, <laughs> his capable dad energy faded into history. All this happened to coincide with the end of my adolescence and the, and the beginning of my adult years. At first, the older dad got, the wiser he got. As my brothers and I wrote college application letters, selected our majors, and moved into our first jobs, we eagerly sought out his advice. He had the experience and the information, and we were in the market for it. Then my brothers and I officially became adults who knew things and selected a number of areas where we believed we thought better than him. That list continues to expand, including, but not limited to, investment opportunities, relationship strategies, and the number of children to sire. But buried under every development I lay claim to as a man, I still want what I think all men want, their father's approval. That desire will never fully go away. Sometimes I want his approval, sometimes I don't care of his opinion about me at all. I should admit, however, I will always be interested in Harrison Ford's approval. <laughs> if Harrison Ford ever said how disappointed he was in me, I would sob uncontrollably. <laughs> But as far as my dad is concerned, I find it liberating knowing that he's just as flawed as I am. An imperfect man. Someone who isn't a movie star. Just another Harrison Ford fan trying to make his way in the world, provide for himself and his family, and praying that Indiana Jones 5 doesn't suck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Brent Hanafy, everybody. Brent Hanafy.